So today we're going through some of the top things that can hurt someone's isolation in their studio. There's a lot that goes into that between sound going out of your room, but then also you have to take into account things outside of your space that could come in. Isolation is just a, it's a hot topic. You know, everyone is is wanting to be able to be in their rooms and be creative at all hours of the day. Um, but there's a lot that goes into that. And uh, the, today's episode, we're gonna focus on just some of those weak points and, and uh, ways that your your isolation plan can be uh, short-circuited. And, and uh, we're gonna go through some of those different details. Um, I'm gonna share uh, here this, this, this graphic to get started. Uh, we've got um, uh, on the screen, here uh, is is just a cross section of a of a room, and there's a noise source in one side, um, and then we've got uh, uh, all all the different paths that sound can travel. You know, it, it can travel just airborne straight through the wall, and that could just be um, a. a, a it's gonna be contingent upon how your wall is built and, and all the different factors of, of uh, how many layers you have and, and how well it's sealed and things like that. There's also penetrations that happen down here, like electrical outlets. You've got HVAC that is daisy chained in this case where it's going up through the register and, and over and into the next room. Uh, you've got vibration paths that are going over the, the walls through the ceiling joists and then under the walls through the floor joists. And so uh, sound can just take a, a myriad of paths to get around what you think you've done well. And we're going to talk about a few of those today. Um, one of the things I think we're going to just mix it up today, uh, I ended up writing down eight different uh, potential weak links in your system, and I'm going to have you draw them out like a, like a card game. Yeah. And, and uh, that way we're not just, it, there's not really any way to prioritize one over the other. All of these things could hurt your system. Yep. And so I didn't want to do them in order thinking that, oh, that first one is, is the most important. I got to just look at that. All of them are important. So yep. I'm going to have you pick the first one. Let's do it. All right, what do you got? Air gaps. Okay, so uh, with air gaps, uh, it's it's a big thing uh, to make sure that uh, uh, you, you limit how many uh, leaks and, and gaps in your system there's going to be. And, um, uh, you know, again, that waterproof analogy, just the smallest leak, a lot of that, that water could yep. get out. Same thing happens with sound, and it doesn't take much, honestly. Um, in fact, like if you have a, a wall that's 15 foot by nine foot, mm -hmm. and you cut a hole in it the size of an electrical outlet, just yep. three inches by five inches, it can drop its STC rating in half, and, yep. and that is huge. And, and so I always tell contractors when it comes to uh, leaks in your system or anything like that, uh, if you think at the end of the project you used way too much silicone caulking you yeah. probably use just enough like yeah. it, it needs to be everything sealed as as tight as possible i've got this graph that, that's uh shown here on the screen and and uh the y-axis is actually the stc uh of of what the wall would be if they had a leak in it and then the uh, x-axis is the stc if that wall had no leak in it and these different uh lines here that are shown are it's the you can see up here in the top top left, it's the area of the leak, so the square footage of the leak, mm -hmm. divided by the area of the wall, and then that associates with these different different lines. Now, to, to give you that example of that electrical outlet in a 15 foot by nine foot wall, yeah. that would fall somewhere around here, this .0005 range, right? And so what you do is that, let's say you had an STC 55 uh, wall, down here with you design an STC 55 wall and you want it to perform like STC 55 yeah. but it has a leak in there of 0.0005 that means you come up to this line and then you go over draw a straight line directly over and wherever it touches this axis the y axis that's the STC you're actually going to get yeah. <laughs> okay so STC 55 with a gap the size of an electrical outlet ends up giving you about a, a 32 and a half, 33 STC. Which is like an apartment wall. Right, I mean, exactly. That, that, yeah. like a part, typical apartment wall is like 32 to 33 STC. Yeah. So you've designed something that should be pretty good for, for a, a studio environment, but then performs no better than an apartment wall. Yeah. And it's all because of just the leaks and gaps. And it doesn't have to be one big opening like that. That yeah. could have just been the sum of a bunch of small openings that created this area of the leak over area of the wall ratio here. So. Sure. It's just a huge thing. It's important to, to make sure you seal everything as airtight as possible. Look at penetrations. All these things are, are going to really matter. Absolutely. 